Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today uh, I'm kind of itching to try out my new uh, Kearney Trekker Model 3H horizontal mill machine that I picked up a couple of weeks ago. I've been using horizontal mills in my shop for many years. I recently sold a little bit smaller version of this same mill, a 2H, uh, and picked up a little bit larger 3H and uh, haven't had a chance to use it yet. So today uh, I'm making an excuse uh, to, to use this machine. I got a quick job. Uh, what I've got here is a piece of uh, cast iron Durabar. This is just some extruded cast iron. I actually have two projects that are, this is going to be used for. One of them is, is I need to make a new gib for my metal planer. And it's about 12 inches long and about one inch wide. And then I also need this little small piece of cast iron to braze into another part for a job I'm doing for a viewer. Um, and I can get all the material out of this, but I need to cut it and make it the proper size. Uh, now, granted, I could run out to the museum where they got a metal cutting bandsaw, just zip this thing off on the bandsaw. But instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a um, slitting saw here. This is just a cutter that goes on the horizontal mill. This one is one that I dug out of my cabinet over there. Uh, it was, it's one I've never used before. It was still wrapped up in the coating on the outside. I believe this one had been sent off to be reground. So it's a nice, fresh, sharp grind on it, which is good. Uh, and we're just gonna basically use this kind of like you'd use a table saw to rip a piece of wood, but in this case, we're gonna use a milling machine to rip a piece of cast iron. Uh, so let's go over here. Let's get this milling machine set up and uh, let's try her out. We're gonna start by installing an arbor here. Uh, I always just like to kind of take a rag and make sure there's no trash or anything up inside that spindle there. Same thing here, I wanna just take a rag, make sure that we don't have any trash on this either. And I've got a one inch arbor here. We'll put that in there and tighten up the drawbar on the back. Track my overarms back a little bit just to kind of get them out of the way. Sure, this is going to fit up on here okay and it is so what I want to do now is get some spacers and uh, kind of build this out to wherever I want to put my put my cutter app these are just uh, one inch inside diameter spacers I got a whole bunch of these over there in different lengths for building different arbors out and that's probably a good place to install the cutter. I do need to get a key for this. Let me go grab a key real quick. Put the key in. We can see which direction I want my cutter to turn. Put that on. And then we'll continue putting some more spacers on here. This is my uh, bearing support here. So this will be what runs inside the uh, overarm support. And uh, I'm just gonna put a couple more spacers out here on the end. And we'll tighten, I'm just gonna snug it right now. We'll tighten it up once we get the overarm support on. Let me uh, run my arms back out. And we will put our arbor support up on the overarms. There we go. Tighten this up. Put a little bit of oil on that. And we'll pull this back up over that bearing. 
right there. And now I'm going to tighten down the supports on top that will lock the overarms in that position. And now that I have my bearing support out here, I can tighten that up. You don't want to tighten this up. I say this every time I do it, but you don't want to tighten this up without having the support here, or you can bend that arbor. Having the support there, we should be fine. And with that, let's see what it looks like. All right, I think it looks good. All right, guys, I've got my work kind of mounted to my table and came up here and started looking for clearances and I'm not going to have enough room to clear the part and the clamping system and all that. The part, yes, the clamps, no, with this diameter cutter. So I dug around over there. I've got a larger uh, cutter here. This one actually takes an inch and a quarter arbor. Uh, I've got a one inch arbor on here now, so I'm going to have to take the arbor off and uh, basically build a new arbor here for a larger cutter, but I think we can make it work. So bear with me. I'm going to just swap that off camera. You've seen how I build an arbor now, uh, but I am going to change cutters. I changed out my arbor here and we, this is now an inch and a quarter diameter arbor. We did have a one inch arbor on there and I went to a six inch diameter cutter. Uh, this one is another one that I have. It looks like it's brand spanking new. I don't think it's ever even been used. I've had a viewer send me a whole stack of these uh, a couple, about a month or two ago. So I'm going to be trying this one out. Now, uh, as far as my work goes, I've got it clamped down to the table. I've got my saw just kind of going down into one of the slots here. So I'm actually down below it. Uh, at first, when I was thinking about this, I was figuring out how I was going to raise this up. But I said, hey, I could just go down that slot and not have to worry about it. Uh, we'll note here that we are uh, cutting from the bottom up, so the pressure is going to be going up. You know, in an ideal world, I would love for it to be pushing down on the table. But with the rotation of the cutter pushing down on here, that would be climb milling. And uh, I'm always a little bit reluctant to do that on a horizontal mill. Uh, particularly this machine might actually handle it fine uh, because this doesn't seem to have a whole lot of wear and backlash in there. But when you're climb milling, the cutter is kind of climbing up onto the work as you're feeding into it. And uh, it wants to kind of walk across the top of this. If you got any backlash in your table, when you come in here, start feeding, it grabs it, pulls it forward. You get a really big chunk and it'll, it'll shatter a cutter in a heartbeat. So typically we want to do conventional milling. And in this case, I need to be kind of coming in an upward direction to do that. Everything's clamped down. It's not going anywhere. I'm not too worried about that at all. Now, I did my math on here. I actually used a little, uh, little, uh, little slide rule thing I've got here from K&T to help figure out feeds and speeds. And I figured up on cast iron uh, how many surface feet per minute you want on your cutter, six inch cutter. It came out, I think, ideally to be around 65 RPMs. Uh, over on the mill, I could choose either between 57 and 75, and which 65 is kind of almost right in between that. I opted to go with a little bit slower uh, speed rate or speed rate on there just to be conservative. So I went with the 57 uh, number. Now, as far as my feed rate goes, according to the math, I could do about 30 inches per minute. Uh, but again, I'm not in a hurry and, uh, you know, if I was going to be doing these all day long and, uh, you know, doing a production job of these, I would probably play with this and kind of slowly get my feed rate up and I'm sure it would probably do 30 inches per minute. I've got it set on 10 inches right now. So, um, let's fire it up. Kind of see what we got going here. Tables are all locked down where they need to be locked down. So uh, we're gonna ease in here. I'm gonna slow my speed right. I went down to five and seven, eight inches per minute. And it's cutting through there with no problem. Put a little WD-40 on here for Lou. We're 
about to come out of the end of the cut here. There we go. Just gonna kind of feed back out the other direction here. Take my shot back here. And it looks like it did just a job. So just a couple of comments here about that cut that we did. And the first thing I'll, I'll just say is yes, we were getting some, some noise on that. Uh, and I want to explain what was going on, why it was happening, and why I wasn't really too concerned about it, and what we can do to make it uh, different if we, if we really uh, wanted to, or we were doing a bunch of these parts. So look at my cutter here. It's, it's, it's a flat disc. It's basically got a, a, a blade that's just got the, the cut going straight across on it. It's a straight tooth cutter, and the width of the, the blade, the top of the blade, is the same as the width of the of the material that it's on. And when you got a blade that way, built that way, and it's got fairly large engagement of the cutter in there, you got a lot of surface area. The cut makes up here, but it's basically just rubbing right on the side of that, of that uh, cutter as it's going through there. And in this case, it caused a little bit of vibration, a little bit of a harmonic, and we got a little bit of noise out of it. No big deal, you know, I'm just making a rough cut here and rough pass. I'm not too worried about that. What could we do differently to make that go away? Well, this is a, what's called a staggered tooth cutter. And if you look on it, number one, you got a tooth that's, they're, they're angled, they're, they kind of alternate in directions. It's not making a cut all the way across, but if you look, it's also cutting on the side. And you got an area in here that goes back to the material back behind it. So any, anywhere that this cutter is coming in contact with the side of the material, it's actually making a cutting action there. So you don't get any rubbing at all. Uh, these things are relieved, so it's only really touching right there on that cutting edge. Uh, once you get back, back, back past that, there's no place for it to contact. So, you know, a cutter like this would have been more ideal. I actually looked for a cutter like this to do it, but I couldn't find one large enough diameter and thin enough that I really wanted to use. So that's the reason I went with this more this particular cutter here. They also make a cutter that is a straight tooth cutter, but it also has uh, where it's cutting on the sides and you got the relief going back to the actual blade itself. You know, that would probably have been my second choice. Again, I didn't have one like that in, in the cabinet where I did have this cutter here and uh, I just decided to go with it. Other thing, just take a quick look. I think I pointed this out earlier, but uh, look at the, the pattern on uh, these parts that I cut. If you look, you kind of see a cross hatch in there where you got the tooth dragging a little bit and cutting a little bit, but you see it going on both the front and the back. That tells me that the machine is pretty tight. The arbor is in, lined up with the table. Everything is in pretty good alignment, uh, which is good to know because I have not done anything to this machine to actually make any adjustments or anything like that. I just brought it in the shop, plopped it down the floor, and went to using it right here. Uh, but even without making any fine tuning, this thing's cutting awesome. I'm really excited about that. I'm, I really think this machine is in very good shape. I did when I brought it in the shop and making these first cuts on here kind of confirms uh, my thoughts. So with that guys, I think we've pretty much done what I wanted to do today with this mill, which was really my goal was I wanted to do a real quick, easy job on it. Just try it out, see how it was gonna work. I've got a few more jobs kind of lined up for this in the near future. Uh, but I want to do something kind of quick and easy to start with. So again, very simple job. Could have done it on the bandsaw. Probably wouldn't have taken me as long. Uh, but it gave me a, an excuse to use this machine and use it for something that you can use a, a milling machine for just fine, which is a cutting material like this. Basically turn it into a glorified uh, table saw, <laughs> metal cutting table saw. But hey, it, it, it showed me what I need to know and it got the job done and I'm now very comfortable moving forward using this uh, 
this machine on some other jobs uh, that's coming up soon. So with that, uh, quick video I know, but uh, that will be a wrap on this one. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and those thumbs up and comments are appreciated as always. And guys, we'll catch you on the next video.